Hi everyone, welcome back to Kim Help ASAP. In today's video, we are going to be calculating pH for polyprotic acids. So these are acids that have more than one acidic proton. Let's get started. Okay, let's jump into our calculation. We need to calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of sulfuric acid, and we're given Ka2 for sulfuric acid as 1.2 times 10 to the negative second. Now you may be asking, why do we only have a Ka2 for sulfuric acid, it's got two acidic protons. Well, that is because the first step for the dissociation of sulfuric acid is a strong step. So this is what my balanced chemical equation looks like for that first proton. Notice it is not in equilibrium. So our first step is a strong step. This makes our calculations for this first step very straightforward because it's not in equilibrium. So my concentration of sulfuric acid equals my concentration of hydronium. Again, from the balanced chemical equation, these are in a one-to-one -one ratio. My problem gave me my concentration for sulfuric acid, so it's just right here. Now, to calculate the pH of this first step, all we need is our concentration of hydronium because our pH is just our negative log of that. So here we go, I'm just gonna plug in my 0 0.250 and we get a pH of 0 0.602. But this is not the end of the story because sulfuric acid has two protons to donate. So what we need to figure out is will that second proton change the pH? Well, let's take a closer look at what is going on with that second proton. Let's get a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so here is our second step of dissociation for sulfuric acid. Notice this one is in equilibrium. So our HSO4 is a weak acid. We need to set up an ice table. Here is our ice table. Here is our balanced chemical equation. What is my initial concentration of my HSO4? Well, if you go back to your original equation, your sulfuric acid and your HSO4 are again in a one to one ratio. That means my concentration of HSO4 is going to be my concentration of sulfuric acid. So it is the same concentration right here, but there's a little bit of a change to the ice table. We have already produced some hydronium. We need to account for that. So my initial concentration of hydronium is also 0.25 molar, which we established right up here. Now I don't have any sulfate yet, so that is zero. That also helps us predict that this equilibrium will shift to the right because I have zero sulfate. So for my change, I'm gonna have minus X, X, and X, and then here are all my equilibrium concentrations. It is a little messier. We're gonna have to do a little bit of work here. Here are all of my equilibrium concentrations. All right, so I am ready to write my expression for Ka2. Here's my Ka2 right here. Again, just products over reactants. I have a value for this Ka2. The problem gave it to me. So I'm gonna plug that in along with everything from my ice table. Now I am very sorry, but this Ka is too large to drop this minus X or this plus X. So you are going to have to fight through quadratic. Here is my quadratic in the proper form. So at this point, I can use my quadratic formula and I'm gonna get two values for X. Here they are right here. How do we decide which value of X to use? Well, we know that we can never have a negative concentration. So I am going to drop that negative value for X. If I used that value for X, then I would have a sulfate concentration that would be a negative number. That is not physically possible. So usually when you're solving quadratics, you will get a positive and a negative root. You want to drop that negative root. So I am going to move forward with this value for X. All right, so again, I'm trying to get to pH here, which means I need to connect in with my concentration of hydronium. So back at my ice table, here is my concentration of hydronium. So I just rewrote it right here. So I'm just gonna plug in my value for X that I got from my quadratic. So there we go right here, and I get a hydronium concentration of 0.261. And you can already see that this is a higher concentration than what I had initially just taking into account the first step but I'm not finished yet, I still have to calculate the pH. 
So my pH is just my negative log of my hydronium concentration, which is just negative log of 0.261. So I have a final pH of 0.583. So for sulfuric acid, you must take into account not only the first step, which is the strong step, but also the second step. Now let's take a look at a triprotic acid. So our problem is calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of phosphoric acid. And we are given the Ka's for phosphoric acid below. Again, phosphoric acid has three acidic protons. So we have Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. Unlike sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid does not have a strong step. Everything is in equilibrium. Let's take a look at that first step, that first acidic proton. Here is my balanced chemical equation. It is in equilibrium because this is a weak step. So let's put it in an ice table. Okay, so here it is in an ice table. Again, my initial concentration is 0 0.250. Again, the problem gave me that. I don't have any products at this point. My change is gonna be minus x, 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 and then here are my equilibrium concentrations. So this is looking very much like any weak acid. All right, Ka1 is just again reactants over products here. So let's plug in our equilibrium row into Ka1. And we also of course have the value for Ka1, the problem gave it to us. So here is everything plugged in. While I would like to drop this minus x, this 10 to the negative third is a little bit too borderline. So I am going to have to fight through the algebra to get my quadratic. And it's a messy one. Here it is right here. But because I have it in the proper form, I can use quadratic formula and I can get my roots. So here are my roots for my quadratic. Again, I need to drop one of these roots. The one I drop is the negative one because I cannot have a negative concentration. So this is my value for X, which of course is my concentration of hydronium. So let's plug in for our pH. Our pH is just negative log of our hydronium concentration, which is our value of X. So here's our negative log of 0 0.0397, and I get a pH of 1.40. This makes sense. I have an acid in solution. It should be less than seven. But that again is just the first of three steps. We need to now take a look at what's going on with our second step or our Ka2. First up, my balanced chemical equation. Here it is right here. Again, you'll notice I'm starting with my H2PO4. Again, I'm just pulling off one proton at a time. It's also really nice to deal with one proton at a time because it means our stoichiometry is always one to one. So at least that becomes simple. This is an equilibrium, so we need an ice table. Okay, here's our ice table. Here is our equation right up here. Now we need an initial concentration for our H2PO4. That is going to come from our previous step. So let's go back and take a look at our previous step. Our concentration of H2PO4 is our value for X that we calculated in our first step, which means this is our concentration of H2PO4. So let's carry that forward onto the next slide in our ice table. Here it is right here. And also we have the same concentration for our hydronium, which we just calculated. Now we do not have any of our conjugate base, our HPO4. Again, for this, it can be tricky to keep track of which species you're dealing with depending on which step you're dealing with. The nice thing, again, is that it's all one-to-one. -one. Okay, so those are our initial concentrations for our change. Again, this is going to be minus x, x, and x because we don't have any of our HPO4 yet, so our equilibrium will shift to the right. Here are all our equilibrium concentrations. Yes, they're messy again. Now let's write our expression for Ka2. So our Ka2, again, is just products over reactants. Our problem gave us the value for Ka2. And of course, we have all our equilibrium concentrations right here. So our expression turns into this, which is very, very messy. However, we do have a little bit of help this time. Our Ka2 is 10 to the negative eight, which means I can drop both of these. Oh, thank goodness. So I'm gonna drop this plus X and that minus X. Here is my new simplified expression, which is so much easier to solve for x. 
I don't even have to take the square root because x is just by itself here. So I get a value of x of 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth. No, that is not a mistake because if you go back and look at this expression here, look, these concentrations are the same. They absolutely divide out. I am still trying to get to pH, which means I need my concentration of hydronium. So my concentration of hydronium is my 0 0.0397 plus x, which means my hydronium concentration is 0 0.0397. So why didn't this change at all? Because I did add my x in here. Well, remember, this is 10 to the negative 8. This 6, if we were to switch this from scientific notation to standard notation, would have seven zeros in front of it. It's just not big enough to make a difference in this final answer here, which means when I plug this in for my pH, I'm doing the same calculation that I did for my first step. My pH is still 1.40. So it's all tied into what is the value of your Ka. When your Ka is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8, that's just not going to make a difference in your concentration of hydronium, which means it doesn't make a difference in your pH. When you're doing these polyprotic acids, once you hit a step that doesn't change your pH, like in this one, you don't even need to go on to the third step. It's gonna be even smaller. So for phosphoric acid, because there's no change in pH at the second step, only the first ionization is significant. So if I go back and look at my Ka's, You'll see there's a really big jump from this 10 to the negative third to 10 to the negative eight. And of course, Ka3 is 10 to the negative 13th. It's even smaller. It dissociates even less. So just because you have a polyprotic acid, don't necessarily assume you've got to go through all these calculations three times. In this case, we really only had to go through it once, but we went through the second calculation just to check and make sure that that second ionization didn't have any effect on our pH, which means we don't even have to bother with a third. I hope you found this video helpful and thanks so much for watching.